So I've written a few books now in this journey uh, and I have written the books kind of as needed. So the first book was Pregnancy and Fibromyalgia because nothing else existed out there. There was very little information and so I wanted to collate everything I had learned, um, any research I had found, any stuff like that and put it into one place and that's how I wrote Pregnancy and Fibromyalgia. And then I wrote my next books because what's missing is an account of someone who has improved but is not claiming recovery or remission or anything like that, uh, but who's wanted to show that journey. And I became a yoga teacher because we needed safe yoga for people with chronic pain and fatigue. <clears throat> it's one thing to think you understand the idea of yoga for someone with chronic pain, but or chronic fatigue even, but there is a complex interplay. And the fact that chronic pain covers so many different things, it is just... You, it's a very difficult thing to do and so as someone who experiences it in her own body I recognize that we needed safe yoga for our bodies and so I created that um, and now at the moment the thing that I think I need most and that other people seem to be needing as well is how to create advocacy and awareness in our own lives and I've done a lot of work of creating advocacy and awareness out there. And I seem to be much better at sticking up for you guys there and my audience than I am for myself. And I realized that adults in my life, it's probably a lost cause. If at this point they haven't kind of got it um, or given me any level of understanding, it's not going to happen. It's a choice. You either choose to try and understand someone's point of view or you don't. And I don't want to be trying to educate people who are not interested. But I've got four little potential advocates living in my house. My children. And they have a lot of questions. And so I created my book, My Mama Has Fibromyalgia, which is probably coming across backwards to you. But I created this book because I know my kids had questions and I wanted to be able to communicate with them and connect with them and answer the questions in an age appropriate manner not in a kind of sideways cute story you can read to younger children but like a real meaty what are symptoms you know what is fibromyalgia is there a cure how are you diagnosed all those kinds of things uh, and so I put it together in this book um, and the book itself is fun and exciting and I can't even tell you like the dream it is to be able to hold that in my hands but the conversations it's spurred with my children has been really wonderful and it's been a slow unfurling uh, and you know on one of the pages I um, I have so that the book is narrated basically by my oldest son and um, in one of the pages I uh, say my mama does her best to manage her symptoms and do as much as she can. She says she fights every day for me and my brothers. I think she's brave. That I added to the book um, after the first edition had come. So I had ordered my own copy to kind of see what it looked like and just double check I was happy with it. And as I was talking with my, bro uh, my son about it, I, I had, we had that actual conversation. So I literally told him, we were just talking about what I deal with, and he told me he thinks I'm brave, which, I mean, <laughs> you know, it um, blew my mind at the time. So I put it in the book, and uh, we were talking about it um, yesterday morning because my second son is very excited about the fact that I'm an author, and he, he's been telling everyone at school, and so I sent a copy of My Mama Has Five Raja, and he read it to the class, which is very sweet. And on the way to school, I was talking um, with my 10 year old about it and he was asking some, some bigger questions and I said, I, it sounds like you have some more questions and he said, yes. And so I said, you tell me what questions you have, like, you know, even now reading the book, listening to me talk, what questions do you have? And so we sat down and wrote a list of questions and I think I need to write, um, almost like a sequel. So this one I'd say is for kind of five to 12 year olds, and that's a broad range. I guess it depends on, on literacy levels. Um, but I feel like 
I need to make like a continuation. <laughs> um, but I have these open and honest conversations with my children. I give them as much detail as they seem to need. Now look, last year I had major issues with endometriosis and I was very unwell and there were a couple of times I nearly went into the hospital and then I had a major operation. So my 10 year old needed a lot more detail and he is very curious. He's very like me. So he needs that level of detail. But what I've noticed is just by opening the conversation, being willing to share and talk and answer questions, even if they do the childish thing and, and get a bit silly about it sometimes, it means that I have created little advocates in my house. And this morning, my 10 year old, um, we were walking into school and um, we had to run to get across the zebra crossing. And the kids were saying, I haven't seen you run before. And I said, yes, I don't really run because it doesn't really go well with um, a lot of the things that I have going on. And then um, Wyatt was trying to show how I was running and he did a very widely good run. And I said, I don't think I did that because that would have put my pelvis out of place. And Noah said, do you get jealous, mum, that you can't move or do things that other people do? And I was able to say, yeah, I get very jealous about the things, you know, that I cannot do and that other people can do things. And sometimes I, I push myself trying to do those things and I hurt myself and then I have to start again. But all these little conversations are creating awareness, not only for me right now, but for him and his life. Because the chance of him being around people with chronic pain or chronic fatigue in any kind of way, you know, whether it's primary chronic pain, whether it's other conditions, whether it's long COVID, that's high. And I am creating, or nurturing rather, aware and compassionate little boys. And so that's why I have gotten really excited, I think, about the next phase. So I, I was kind of shy about this because I couldn't afford a fancy editor, right? So this is, is very simple. And I was a bit shy about it and I haven't really kind of promoted it. But I do have versions of the sitting there. I have uh, my mama has chronic pain and I have my mama has MECFS. And I've been sitting on them and I haven't furthered them because I have a little bit of, I guess you'd call it imposter syndrome or I was a little bit shy because I don't have the skills to design it myself and I don't have the money for an illustrator. Fun fact, you don't really make much money from publishing these books. Um, I try to make them as affordable as possible and then, you know, the provider, um, Amazon or whatever you use, takes a good cut. But I'm really excited to get on with it. So I am newly excited to move on to letting us have um, a circle of our own advocates, knowing that these children are going to go out in the world and they're going to meet so many people like us. Maybe not exactly like us, but they're going to meet people like us. And I hope that my children are accepting and aware, I mean, obviously for so much, just more than invisible illness, but, but I want to create or nurture these young advocates for all human beings. We have a lot of conversations in this house. I'm a very liberal person, so I've talked to my children about a lot of things. Um, and accepting people as they are in many forms. But yeah, I'm excited. So let me know if you're excited too and are curious about the journey uh, as I go through and try and get these other books out in the world. And if you are curious about getting a copy, I'll put a link below uh, and you can check it out yourself.